Club Devils, J-Daw back bright and early in the morning to knock out some questions with the Devils. So get your shovels, and we're going to start fucking digging on Best Band Names of All Time video. It was posted two weeks ago, 816 views, 120 comments. So anything over 100 in comments is acceptable in my book. 200 plus is even better. A little over 90. Shit. Right first one in the goddamn box. Comments all the time. Has the, has the delay in vinyl production affected sales at all? No, not really, because we had shit that's like, would have submitted a year out, even though it's coming out a year, like let's say next month, we'll submit another batch. And the next month, another batch of whatever we're submitting, just when it's done, just get it submitted. So it kind of just kept trickling out. Every month, there's still something coming out. Makes sense? So it's annoying, especially some of the shit that I'm super excited about, like one that I'm uh, pumped about, because now the last days of humanity is out and the um, Unlords are out. Those are the ones I was looking for the most. But what else is at the press for a long time? Their Divine Empire. That was what I was super pumped about. But uh, one that I'm looking forward to probably most, looking off the top of my head, that I know it's at press, is um, the Morgue from France, Art Gore album. No LPs of that. And then... I am looking forward to Nunslaughter Red is the color of ripping death, but don't, it should be out very, very soon. I think it's I think it's actually pressed by now, but I don't know if they shipped it yet. But nonetheless, we should have it with the next two, three, four weeks, some shit like that. In soon time frame. But yeah, that was submitted at least a year ago. But uh Morgue, it'll still be a while. But I'm definitely looking forward to that because Morgue, that was another CD I grew up uh, on the bladed a bladed records version. Uh they lived here in Ohio for a little while, and I guess there was some falling out. I know one of the guys still lives here. I actually just saw him at a party the other day, too. Didn't really he doesn't there's no way he remembers me. I was we were teenagers and shit we met him. But uh anyways, one of the guys lives here and the guy I was in contact with is Max that I set it up with. And uh but yeah, I so used to see him live multiple times in the early two thousands. Bladed Records put out uh Art Gore and I, the EP I believe they put out the uh, Bone Crunch EP too. I could be wrong on that. But uh Bone Crunch and Art Gore is what I grew up on as a teenager, seeing him in shows and so Never been on vinyl, so I'm definitely happy that's coming out on fucking vinyl. But uh, yeah, it'll probably, I doubt it'll be out this year. It, it is submitted. <laughs> it's at press, but by the time it's done, yeah, it'll probably, <laughs> which is fucking crazy when you think about it. 2023. So it fucking sucks, but it is what it is. <laughs> From uh, Skirner. The Cimmerian. Don't think I've seen you in the comments, Bravo. So shout out to you. Welcome to the channel. Keep commenting away. And yeah, anytime I said bonus points, you guys know the reference, man. Always leave them in there if you do. The fit the bill <laughs> line is definitely a reference to the legendary black metal prank call. Only old old dudes remember it. Yeah, that is for the uh, black metal Joe, Joe Offric. Uh, it's, it's on the, uh, it's the only thing Mushroom Head's good for. I guess it was, which guy from Mushroom Head? I can never remember. Is it John, James, Jesse? Can't think of the name. But anyways, I guess, yes, from what I heard, he was the uh, prankster guy. And because uh, I actually have a CD. It's all just prank phone calls. 85% of it's funny as fuck. Um, and that, that's why it's called the original prankster. And the first one is, and there's the Black Metal Joe call, which is fucking hilarious. But that's why, yeah, I don't, I don't think you fit the bill. Uh, that is where that line's from. But this, So that's probably the funniest phone call, but it's a coin toss. If you guys never heard it, I don't know if it's on YouTube or not. It's uh the track is called White Dudes, and it's like uh he calls them same monotone voice where it sounds totally fucking from the hood, and um he calls up this photo company, talks about he has uh got the wrong photos, a bunch of white dudes with their dicks hanging out. We got a problem. That that one is fucking hysterical too. That might even be funnier than the Joe one, but it's it's a coin toss. There's other ones that are funny, but those two by far are the funniest: the Black Metal Joe and the, the White Dudes. Virtually impossible not to crack a smile. Um, so, yeah. Bonus points there. Bye-bye. You knew what it was from. Abhorrent Spawn 666. What's up, J-Dog? I've always thought it was weird that some killer bands have been around since the 80s and never got big, and others did. Do you think there's a magic formula for a band's success? Sick music, logo, artwork, titles, label support, etc. Thanks, bra bra it's certainly a combination of stuff. Uh, I've had this conversation a little bit uh, on Hellcast when Craig and I were kind of talking about it. I'm sure he definitely disagreed with me, and a lot of people probably would. But I honestly believe anything's going to help. Word of mouth, whether a label does a ton of advertisement, 
But to a certain degree, and some of the times it's so fucking minimal, because I, I can tell you right now, there's definitely shit on Hells where uh, we've advertised the fuck out of, and it was still one of the slowest releases we did. And then once we didn't advertise at all, for the most part, sold way better. Like, way, way, way better. Like, uh, like for example, Speed Wolf was a brand new band. I, we didn't do anything special advertisement over it. And I know there's releases prior to stuff, and around the same time that we did, still outsold it. What I think it is, honestly... Um, I don't want to say this in a negative way, and it's definitely even more so today. Definitely more so today in, in the last five years when social media existed. I think it's kind of whatever most people are talking about because I, like I said, like the video a few years, a few back, most people won't even be in the metal scene after age thirty, whatever, 35, 40, whatever, getting into a fifteen. 10 to 15 years after this, they'll be burnt out. That's what most people like. So what I'm getting at, most people aren't even truly passionate. It's more so. To fit in, what's cool? What can you talk about? Because, for example, if I'm wearing like a, for example, like I'm talking about a band, Putrefaction, Painful Death demo. For the most part, you you put that on your 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 IG, your fucking social media, your Facebook. There's not much to talk about because most people don't know what that is. They haven't heard it, so you're not quote unquote cool. You can't quote unquote like, yeah, I'm I'm here too, and like you know what I mean. So it's those bands, whoever's, and this has always been going on. But like in the 80s and stuff, less because there was no social media, but I think it was more so who has the most t-shirts out there, who's touring the most, who's more so word of mouth and it, it, it was what I'm getting at. Who's cool to listen to? Because yeah, there's some bands where it's like, dude, there's no excuse why they shouldn't be equally as popular because they did just as much, just as much touring. It's just, just as quality of music. At the end of the day, the music, you kind of can't say that because there's one thing if it's just like, this is total sloppy ass garbage, not quality music. Maybe you can make that argument, but Music is in the air, like beauty or whatever, like eye of the beholder, ear of the beholder for fucking music. One man's trash might be another man's treasure. But there is a general consensus that if it's quality, for example, you take a band like Monstrosity and Malevolent Creation versus Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse is way bigger than both Monstrosity and Malevolent Creation, but the quality of music is about the same. I know someone's going to argue, well, you know, Alex Robster is a better bass player. You know what I'm getting at. It's not like some, it, it's the same style of fucking music. Same type of recording studio, very similar quality, right? All, all three bands have toured all over the world. All three bands have been around since, you know, 89, 90, whatever in that area. All three bands have been on a, you know, a bigger label or something, had, had support, had been in magazines, tours, you know what I mean, done everything. But Cannibal Corpse is much fucking bigger. Why? Because you're in the cool club. They were in Ace Ventura. That was, that was just... I guess the name, and that is cool to throw out. Like you get those fucking dick lickers, you got no business being the same. Just to say the name, Cannibal Corpse. I mean, it is a cool. I could say it's probably my favorite band name. Without even thinking about it, we kind of discussed that earlier in the previous video. It's a cool, catchy lingo name. You sound cool if you're into it. That's that's honestly what my I kind of think. And it's a lot of people. It's just unfortunately what makes it up. Just a lot of fucking trendies, and eventually will be ha has beens, and also just not it. Yeah, just out of this. I mean, there's cause it's, 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 they're not into it strictly for the music. Again, the, the litmus test is what are you listening to when you're completely alone by yourself in the car, by yourself, drive on the way you have, you have a half hour drive to work. What, what the fuck are you listening to? Goddamn some stupid ass Rovers ro here in uh, Cleveland Rovers morning glory or fucking Joe Rogan. You ain't listen to death metal. Like you ain't listen to metal, but you claim this is what you're into. What you're super passionate about because that's what a lot of the guys are. That's all they, that's what they're doing. Um, me, I never, like, that's all, if I'm in my car, that's all I listen to is music. You know what I mean? Especially with the fucking drive, actual 30 minutes more an hour, that's that's all I'm listening to. Oh, I'm gonna, not, fuck yeah. I'm going to pick out an album that I know is around 45 minutes or not. I'm going to have listened to this in a while. That's what I'm going to do. Like, and all by yourself in the car. Not what am I putting on because I own this, but it's at a party because I look fucking cool because I can fit in. That's what a lot of the people are. And that's why I truly think certain bands, whichever one just so happens to get more talked about. Because again, like what we're talking about the death metal scene. And I keep bringing them up just because they're a notable band. It's called about this 200 stab wounds bands, which from what I understand, it's just a bunch of kids or young bucks anyways in the early twenties. Why are they blowing up over another? I didn't think it sucked. I, I listened to it. I thought the carcass cover shit was cool. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, 200 stab wounds, kind of a cool name. Kind of, kind of comes off as a death core name to me, but at the same time, kind of a cool name. I don't know. Hit or miss. But, uh, why, why? And it's nothing against them personally. It's nothing against their music. It's nothing. Why? But why are they blowing up? over other death metal bands in the last five, six, seven years that are just as quality, if not better, but let's just say equal to, but are like <clears throat> not moving moving or getting talked to or getting offers 
Soulfly tours or whatever, which, goddamn, I hope they got some gun buffs for that fucking tour, but good business move. You know what I mean? Why aren't they being talked about? Again, for whatever reason, on social media or whoever was talking about it, word of mouth, that was the cool thing to be in. That's what was, yeah, you look cool if you're into them. You're cool if you're, that's what it, it's what it is. Flat out what it is. I never paid attention. That's, in all honesty, guys, too, when I said I don't watch metal channels and shit like that, part of the big part of the reason is because I'm around 24 7. I see what's, I kind of have the inside scoop, so I don't, I, I just never, I just don't YouTube anything for metal related. But I'm like this for like, for example, if a new movie comes out or whatever, like, and I want to see it, I don't look up reviews ever. I've never done it. Like, and it's something like, if I, if the new emulation comes out, by the way, I did get the new emulation LP and I listened to it and I liked it. That was a good album. Listen to it twice already. That was, I mean, it was about what I expected. It's the same thing they've been doing the last five to seven albums, you know, since two, pretty much in the Holy Cult on. Same style of music as that, you know what I mean? Which is, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix their model. But yeah, it good. I enjoyed it. It was a good album. Anyways, um, fuck, you're on a bike. What the fuck was I saying? God damn it. Forget the fuck I was even talking about. Yeah, new emulation. Talked about that. I was talking about 200 stab wounds, popularity, bands. Yeah, I don't know. What I, I forget what I was talking about, but it, what I was trying to what I was trying to get at with the fucking emulation. But um, yeah, just whoever's talked about, and that's uh, that's what I think it is. But but again, anything will help to spread the word of mouth. But it's going to be like, like for example, if you send out some flyers or whatever, something you know, you might sell another couple few more copies, whatever. Um, because I I know because I know people that have with their bands. And bands that we've dealt with, I'm not going to mention any names whatsoever. And it's like they try, they try, try, they're pushing them, and it's like still nobody cares. And that's the only thing I can think of. That's the only thing that makes logical sense. Now, it's one thing if it's a band like, why didn't this band make it anywhere? It's complete fucking uh, ass. Well, then, you know, <laughs> that I get. So. Furnace Rex, I, I make Nana Tina watch your videos. Goddamn right. Better. Fuck yeah. That's what I like to hear. Make her watch and learn, goddammit. Oh, and I said, I said that. I know what I was saying earlier. I've lost my train of mind. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't watch reviews and shit. I don't look at reviews, metal reviews, like when I was putting out the new emulation. When it came out, I wasn't like, let me check out the reviews. I don't care. because I, I don't. That's the difference. Like, I like the music just for me to hear. I don't give a shit what anyone's opinion is. That's kind of why I don't watch YouTube videos because, like, the truth be told, if we're just talking about bands or music or whatever, at the end of the day, unless I'm talking like my buddies were just shooting the shit, I don't really care what anybody's opinion is. I want to listen to them and make up my own opinion. I, I don't, and a lot of times, especially if it's new and I haven't heard it, I don't want a, a preconceived notion in my mind of what to think. I want to just go on it raw and what does my honest brain chemistry think of it on its own? And I'll leave it at that. But a lot of these these kids and shit getting into it, the bands and the bands are just blown up. I don't, I don't think that's what it is. It's just, yeah, who, who's cool? Even though they may not even, they they, it's probably unknowingly, you know, among them. You know what I mean? That they're not, they're not doing it knowingly, but that's what it is. Only thing I can think of is the only thing that makes sense. Otherwise, I got no fucking answer for you because that's, like I said, I've seen it where there's no explanation otherwise. They're doing just as much as the fucking bands, their predecessors, where are much bigger than them, they're doing the exact same shit. So it makes no sense to me. Harry Quinn, J Dog, you ever heard Soylent Green? They are from NOLA. That was that Noel looks from Louisiana, right? I think so. But apart from a couple sludgy sounding riffs, they are a great grindcore band. Lewis Benjamin, vocalist Go Godor is so Soylent Green vocal Soylent Green's vocalist. Uh Harry Quinn, go back and watch some of my past videos. I talk uh, I tell a story when I first met uh what did you, what did you say his name was? Louis Benjamin Lewis Benjamin. Uh yeah, I met him. Uh, I told the story. I met him when he was doing Soylent Green, their first, second album. And when they were on Relapse, early two, maybe 99, 2000, he, he was telling me about Godor when he was going to start. And I was like, what the fuck? Go, go out and watch it. I talk about it. Uh, Soylent Green, though, as far as I heard, I don't, I don't, isn't their full, first full length before um, uh, Relapse Records was a Pussy Lover or Lover Pussy Soul or something like that? I don't think I know that one. But I know the first two relapse ones. There's an EP, and then there was a full length. And I remember first hearing them on the uh, sample. And I actually did pick up, I think, the EP. It's been years since I listened to those. I, I, I eventually got rid of it because I didn't think it was. I do remember thinking it was. My re remembrance of it, it was Pantera trying to play Grindcore. And I'm like, 
there was definitely parts I liked. It was catchy and shit, but the, uh, the full length, especially, I remember I was like, there's definitely some shitty, just total shitty tracks. But um, I don't think they're a complete junk. Dumb name. And, um, but yeah, I remember them having some enjoyable tracks, but oh man, I haven't listened to them in about 20 fucking years. But the only ones I knew was the E. I can't remember the fucking names one more. They have one first full length on Relapse and the, first, the EP. Those like four or five songs, the four songs by the Southern Green on Relapse. But uh, who knows? Maybe I'd go back and listen to them and be like, it probably would just be the EP if I did. I'm like, man, this is fucking great. Man, it brings back old memories when I was. Fuck, I think I was like 14 when I picked that up. I think the reason I picked it up is I heard one song off one of the Relapse samplers, liked it, got it, thought the EP, all in all, maybe there's like one track I didn't like, picked up the full length, and I'm like, I think some of the songs, one or two of the songs were from the EP on the full length. I like those ones, and then maybe one or two other songs, and I'm like, the rest of this kind of sucks. And then everything after that, I've never heard. So I have no idea. <laughs> Cardiac arrest, pretty, pretty random question. Who do you think would fit in the trunk of a car better, Danny Filth or Danny DeVito? <laughs> uh, so Danny Filth is sm is short, but he's no way he's Danny DeVito short. As a matter of fact, I think I looked it up one time because when you see Danny DeVito, you know, obviously lots of movies, and uh, he's in the show uh, Always Sunny. I think I had Lindsay look it up on her phone. I'm like, how tall is he? I was like, is he even five foot? I think he's either just five foot or he's he's not or he's right like like not even five foot, maybe like four eleven or something, like just under it. Whatever it is, he was super at tall as five foot one, but whatever it was, Danny was short, but he wasn't that short. I'd say Danny was probably about five four, five five from my memory. Maybe five six. He but he was he was short, but not that I mean, that's more I mean, Danny DeVito's borderline midget fucking uh, short. Um and who you can't say that word. Fuck you, I said it. What do you mean can't say it? I'm not saying it's a negative thing, it's we talking about. That's what we're referred to. I'm not saying to be mean. I don't got a problem with fucking short people, little people, midgets, whatever the fuck you call them. I just thought that's what they're called. Fuck off. Okay, anyone's going to come and say that in the comments too. Just a little fun fact thrown there. But, so Danny DeVito's sh shorter, but Dan, uh, from what I seen, Danny Filth was, at least when I met him, he was he was pretty lean. You know what I mean? Pretty uh, skinny. Danny DeVito's fat as fuck though, so the width might take up a little bit more space as opposed to the height. But, depending on your car length, I think Danny would probably, uh, uh, DeVito would probably fit easier. Because even his guts out, usually sometimes the trunks go back a little bit deeper, but they're a little bit more narrow. So you got to, yeah, because you can always tuck his legs in. So, yeah, I think Danny DeVito. But a little, little harder to pick up, though, because Danny DeVito looks fat as fuck. Last I've seen him, he was looking hit as shit. And with all these people dying left and right, because Danny DeVito, he's got to be getting up there. I'm surprised he's still alive, because he looks like hell. Now, I don't know, it could be where... He doesn't look as bad as you think, maybe because the last, the latest shit I've seen him with was uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Like, I don't know what the latest movie he played in that I've ever seen. Shit, I can't even think. I mean, movies that come to my mind when I think of Danny DeVito is like Twins, Batman Returns, Matilda, a few others. But from the 2000s, I can't even think of anything. I'm sure there's something that I've seen, maybe even liked, but the later stuff. And when you see him in Always Sunny, but they maybe for his character, they're making him look extra bad. Because I'm like, man, this guy looks like fucking hell. How is he even still alive? But yet somebody completely random, you don't even expect fucking drop dead. Like, what the fuck? How's, how's this guy beating him? Mystery of lives, right, goddammit? RJ, CJ Rock. Does anyone here like the band Relative Relative from Rochester, Minnesota? Never heard of them. P.S. Fear of the Dark is actually my favorite Iron Maiden album. Whew, really? Well, something for everyone. I own it. I think it's okay. Uh, I definitely, I enjoy it for the most part. It's been a while since I've There's no way it's my fucking favorite. For example, uh, the latest Maiden that I like, and I actually, and I like it much more than Fear of the Dark, is, um, fuck is it, why is it, uh, Brave New World. I do like, it's, oh, shit, it's been at least five years since I listened to that. But I, I definitely like that album top to bottom. What is it, like Wicker Man's on there and shit? I have to bust that out and listen to it again because it's been quite a while. But I, I the only my only kind of complaint is I remember the songs being very long, a little bit dragged out where they're going over the chorus and shit. Probably more times than necessary. But all in all, it's a really enjoyable record. After that, I've heard albums. I think I might even own a one after that. I think I liked like one or two songs off a couple of them. I heard one is at the frontier. Whatever one that came out, maybe not the last one, but the second to last, maybe five years ago or so, whatever a five year ago album was. I remember listening to something, and I was like, I don't, I'm bored fucking stiff. I didn't like, like anything. But um, 
Or Brave New World. I do. I, I, I probably I'll listen to that again. You know, put that in the back of the listen pile because it's been a while and I, I remember thoroughly enjoying it. Make this the last goddamn question. It's from none other than Adam Schnellback. Gotta read off the goddamn Schnellback. Just curious, are you a Seinfeld fan? Eh, not really. I always, because it's funny, uh, every now and then when we're going to sleep, like there's nothing else out, Lindsay will have that on for like at least 20 minutes. Like, oh, this show's so dumb. It's, there's no rhyme. I guess maybe because I never watched it as a kid. And it's in, I'm like, I don't like see the point of it. Like there's like no plot or nothing. Like, That's the point. Like it's not supposed to. So I don't know. Maybe I, I think it's like a sense of humor that I just didn't understand because I, I was popular. It was successful. But I, I just didn't get it. It's nothing like, it's not unstomachable though, where there's some shit. Like I'll tell you like, like my Lindsay, she likes leaving the show, The Office. That show, I think it's horrible. I can't stand it. I'm like, it's just, it, it's almost just annoying. Where it's almost like they're trying to be funny. I'm like, I was like, this is, I can't, I, I don't think I've ever cracked a smile once on it. I'm like, there's nothing funny about this, and it almost seems forced. You know, when you go to something that you can tell someone's trying to be funny, and you're like, dude, you're not even funny though. It reminds me of that. I'm like, I just can't even stomach it. Seinfeld's not like that. Um, favorite Simpsons season. Don't know if I have a favorite season, but it would be from the 90s when I was a kid. Because after that, after probably, so just do the math. When did Simpsons come out? 89, 90, something around there. I was born in 85. Around age 13, that's when I started working. I stopped watching The Simpsons until, again, I, I bought some of the DVDs when I moved out of my house, my parents' house. When I was like 20, 21, there was a lot I missed. So if you get anything, so 13, whatever, whatever, age 13 is from 85, 98. So 98 down, anywhere the, from first season one, 89 to 1998, it'd be something in there. Because after that, I was super hazy. And even anything 99 to, to today, there's a bunch of episodes I've seen, but there's a ton that I guarantee I, I've never seen this one, never seen this one, never seen this one. But I will say it's an episode I remember, I remember it was brand fucking new. It was advertised. I think it came out on a Friday night or a, or a Sunday night. New episode coming out, and I might have still been like 11 or 12 or something like that. Uh, maybe, maybe even 13, but uh, because right, right around that is when I started working. I just had time to so work in the evenings. Um, one of my favorite episodes was the one where uh, Mr. Burns, they think he's an alien. Um, well, Homer thinks he's an alien, right? Maybe he gets those injection fusions. For whatever reason, I, I remember when it was brand new, saw when it was brand new, and I, I, I don't know if that's my favorite episode of all time, but that's the first one that pops in my mind. Oh, and I like... Uh, I do like the episode a lot where Homer's selling uh, uh, grease. <laughs> and I get my money from, what is this? You say, yeah, uh, you collect 27 cents for grease. And he's like, yeah, 27 cents for grease. He's like, the end of the bar's like, dad, but all that bacon costs is $28. He's like, yeah, yeah, but your mom bought that bacon. He And he's like, well, yeah, but doesn't she get her money from you? And I get my money from grease. What's the problem? <laughs> I thought that was just total dumb fuck. Um, I, I remember like, I like that episode a lot too. Uh, those are the first two that generally pop in my mind. I like a lot of the Treehouse of Horrors. But yeah, an absolute favorite season. I don't know. I really kind of like uh, the first season. I remember not being the greatest, but the second and third, where it was still kind of raw and gritty. Every time I watch those, I don't know. I kind of tend to enjoy them a little bit more. But I don't know if I'd have a favorite. And then, uh, and have you ever seen the film The Gates? I don't think I have, but uh, I've been more curious ever since The Lurking Corpses. Uh, who I love, check out. If you don't haven't heard the Lurking Corpses, if you guys like punk and metal, I think it's the best combination in the fucking world. Love the Lurking Corpses. Fucking 10. God damn it. I think it was on the last time they did. It was what the second trap? They have a song called The Gate. I was about that. I knew that. But to this date, I don't think I've ever seen the movie. But I was more uh, interested to see the movies than when they did that song. Where kids listen to fictional heavy metal band and actually open the gates of hell. 1987. No, I definitely never seen it. But um, I, I guess I didn't even know what the fuck it was about then. But you just informed me. So now I got the general idea what it, what the uh, topic is. Russell Flight 9, 9, FTW, FTW, what is that for that? Uh, I'm not in with the uh, late, laugh out louds. <laughs> I mean, I know that one obviously is. Uh, WTF, <laughs> why the face according to Phil Dunphy, right? What the fuck? Uh, FTW, what the fuck does that mean? I'm sure you're all shouting the screen. Um, and I, what was what it? 50? Fucking love that. I don't know, whatever, but it sounded like he likes it. And I love the Puppet Master, especially the storytelling DVD. The storytelling DVD was great. But yeah, Merciful Fate 9, huge, huge fan. That's the album I saw them on. Uh, that was the only time I seen Merciful Fate. It was the 9 tour. Fucking amazing. I absolutely loved it. I, and I do remember it. Like, I literally, it stood out my mind. Uh, absolutely did love it. 
Uh, thought King Diamond looked cool as hell. It's kind of fucking scary in a sense, too, at age 14. Um, off the album nine, I love the song I Sold My Soul. Uh, I like the eerie keys on it and shit. Definitely, uh, it was kind of a more of an experimental song, but I, I love that track. And then my other favorite song, it possibly, probably my favorite song between Sold My Soul or Buried Alive. I think the song Buried Alive is fucking phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So, yeah, great, great fucking record. So people are like, oh, the only, only the Alice from the 80s. I, I mean, entitled to your opinion, but I don't get it. I, was, I don't know how you can't like these. I really, I, I just really don't get it. To me, it's like, I, I, I love them. Anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. You know what to do. Comments, questions, concerns, leave them in there. Hit the sub button. Do everything else. Tell everybody else to fucking watch my shit. And I'll see you tomorrow, goddammit. Later.